What's up guys, it's your boy Ajax, and today I'm breaking down the top synths of the 1980s. That's right, a synth motherfucking wonderland. So cash those stimulus checks, it's time to go shopping. Cha ching The Roland D50, Revenge of the Nerds. We've got Bush! The D50 is a tad cold, but perfect for working with effects work and film scores. The synth can create the longest evolving sustain that I've ever heard on any synth. If you're working on a sci-fi film or thrillers, the synth is just for you. The Tiesco SX400 sounds like magic in the dark. It looks like something grandma would buy, but it creates the coolest strings, pads, and leads that have a strange and eerie tone to them. The synth really shines when you engage the ensemble and the pads begin to shimmer and phase. It's made for film and indie artists looking for an original sound. The Roland JX10, just a little taste of heaven. One of Roland's best hybrid synths of all time. The JX is bright, warm, and powerful. Definitely usable for that 80s sound. The chorus is not the Juno chorus, but still creamy enough. It's perfect for warm pads, snappy leads, and punchy bass. 70. The Krumar Spirit, the Italian Stallion. If you're looking for a synth that gets super gnarly, then this is it. The Spirit is a stout old gal, thick on the low end. It's aggressive synth that excels at grimy bass, dirty leads, and radical effects. With a glide in the X mod, the Spirit will have you soaring in no time. 16. The Emu Emulator 2. The floppy disk monster. The Ableton of the 1980s. No muss, no fuss sampler synthesizer. Hop in your floppy disk, go take a dump, and five minutes later, hear the board roar. That's right, with that fat filter, your pianos, drums, and vocals are immediately warmed up like a hot pocket. <laughs> The Oxford Oscar, the Swiss army knife of the mono synths. The sound of the Oscar reminds me of Dave Smith's mono evolver, but fatter. It's laden with knobs that'll keep any tweaker on Adderall busy for days. The Oscar sounds aggressive and it's full of sonic potential. With those 24 ways for sound sculpting in that fat filter, the synth is set apart from all other mono synths. 14. The Korg Monopoly, the thunder from down under. One of Korg's fattest bass synths of all time. This little monster will get real mean when she's pushed hard. One of the best features of the Monopoly is the Cross Mod, which is the finest and thickest on any Korg ever. It shines at thunderous bass, punchy strings, weird effects, and aggressive leads. The Sequential Circuits Pro 1. She's nice and thick, huh? One of Dave Smith's beefiest mono synths ever. The Pro One has oscillators with girth. It cuts through the mix like a bad ex-girlfriend. It produces beefy bass lines, snappy leads, and nasty effects. With those 3340 chips that'll give you that cookie crunch. The Korg Poly 6. She cuts like a knife, sounds like a dream. She's easy to work with, it sounds warm, and has a juicy filter. The added art gives you those retro bass lines, and the chorus ensemble effects just sweeten up the sound. The CMI Fairlight, the undisputed king of sampling. The Pro Tools of the 1980s. It has a cool touchpad screen for working with the samples. The sound of the Fairlight gave your samples more character and warmth. The onboard sequencer was easy to work with and made the Fairlight one of the funnest samplers of the 80s. If you're wondering where's the beef, <laughs> it's right freaking here. The Roland Juno 106. What are you the 106 has that big bottom and earth shattering bass that'll blow your speakers wide open. It's not as bright as the Juno 60s, but with a MIDI, it's just as good. One of the best features of the 106 is the chorus effects, which makes pads and strings come to life. The 106 is reliable and a studio staple. It's perfect for beginners, indie, pop, and electronic artists. The Korg Trident version 2. Sounds as big as King Kong. She's an overlooked synth, but definitely worth a mention, especially for those indie synth enthusiasts. The pads are juicy and the leads will bite through nicely. It sounds warm and thick, and the flanger is one of the best on any Korg ever. The best part of the Trident is the ability to combine the organ and the synth section to create some super fat sound. The Yamaha CS70. This ain't no choir boy. She looks like a church organ and sounds like it too. She's warm, thick, beefy, and totally legit. The synth has soul and comes to life with the filter and excels at drones, effects, eerie pads, and thunderous bass. Seven. The PPG version two, the holy grail of digital synthesis. 
Yeah! DPG is a true gem and a part of synth history due to its analog filters and the VCA that warm up the digital waves like a Dutch oven. With a plethora of digital waves on board, the sound palette is nearly limitless. If you're looking for creative pads, silky strings, and sparkling leads, and have a ton of cash, then the PPG version 2 is the one. Six. The Yamaha DX1. The synth that changed the game. It's the size of a spaceship and weighs a ton as well. She's extremely warm and vibrant for a digital synth. It's got an insane 32 polyphony for laying parts to cook out those magical pads. The Sequential Circuits Prophet 5. She's a bad mamma jamma. From Kraftwerk, The Cars, and John Carpenter, the Prophet 5 has got a proven track record. It's got its own character and soul, and it's perfect for creating those classic 80s bass lines, aggressive leads, and dark pads. The Elka Synthex, one of my favorite synths of all time and the sexiest synth on the planet. Yeah. It sounds similar to the Jupiter 8, but with a more aggressive tone. It sounds huge and has massive capabilities like cross and ring mod, chorus, and the four track sequencer. And with all those buttons and features, it's a tweaker's fantasy. The Moog, Memory Moog, the godfather of the synth world. What's up, Bob? She's a tad buggy, but it doesn't matter when she sounds this good. The Memory Moog has balls like a rhino, and when it gets warmed up, it roars like a lion. It's like having an orgy with six mini moogs. From thumpy bass, ripping leads, to earthy pads, the Memory Moog is a collector's fantasy. The Roland Jupiter 8. She looks like a rainbow and sounds like it too. One of the most covetous synths of all time. The Jupiter 8 was a true workhorse of the early 80s. It's extremely bright, punchy, and warm. The layout is excellent, and so is the sound. The filter is extremely fast and can create punchy bass lines or those Roland 808 and 909 kicks. And she's totally bodacious. The number one synth of the 1980s and the Godzilla of the synth world. The Oberheim Matrix 12. Sonic Boom! The Oberheim Matrix 12 has 12 analog voices that'll split your dick in two. Yep, that's right. It's one of the fattest poly synths on the planet. The oscillators are thick and the filter is pure butter. With the modulation matrix, the sonic potential is almost infinite and it excels at monstrous bass, thick pads, glassy leads, and lustrous bells. But you're gonna have to wait for grandma's inheritance to buy this sucker. It's totally tubular. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe. Hit the bell if you want to feel a tingle in the jingle. Mm.